within the first 30 seconds of meeting someone, people look at what you're wearing more than anything else. Oh, I love that. I've seen firsthand how clothes can transform and elevate someone, their spirits, their look, their presence in the world. And I think that's really important. It's really okay as women to allow ourselves to be present in the world. I call myself a style activist. When you are considered to be someone that should just go to the sidelines and disappear. And a lot of times that does happen with people that don't fit the norms of fashion. I'm Judith Rizzio, I'm 65, and I'm a style activist. You're looking at my collection, well, part of my collection of clothes that I love. And the thing about them is that you can't really find these type of clothes anymore, so they're real treasures. They're little bits of art. This is a great piece. Look at this. It's just so good. Very 80s. I love it. This is such a beautiful, simple orange dress. It's so much fun for the summer. This is all hand embroidered. My business is called Out of Our Closet. It's a double entendre on many levels. I have a couple of clients, but being able to really help people that are, have discovered and are now living in different ways, in different bodies. I love to work with a variety of people and I'm really working hard at moving into the trans community. This is the real thing uh -huh. from the 70s. And also with older women is being hidden in your closet and stepping out that door and finding a sense of placement in the world. I set my fee structure so that my services could be accessible to anyone, including someone who can't pay. It's one of my favorites, and people really enjoy it when I wear it, because I love this. That the bold, bold prints and, and fantastic heavy cotton. This is a bunch of stuff from my past, and when I took it out and looked at it, it really amazed me, some of the experiences that shaped me as an activist. This photo means so much to me. This is my Nana Banana in 1928. She is with some friends, and if you notice, she's in a men's bathing suit, and if you look down, and see how these two young men are holding their hands. It's not a definite heterosexual hold. She was so animated and fun, and uh, she loved clothes. And she also gave me her sewing machine. She was very independent, and so I know that that affected me. I just think I got a lot of her DNA. I mean, I think the fact that I'm bisexual came through her, and she definitely gave me the permission, the support, the love to be who I was. 1976. I was a part of a political theater company, and a thing that spinned off of it was a group called the Fallen Angel Choir. We had a huge following in Portland, and we would sell out 20 nights. But it was so pointedly political that, you know, people really loved it. As a young person realizing what you can do using art in regards to making statement and pushing against the, the norm. So that's when I realized how important that was. It's one of my most fantastic experiences about pushing the boundaries as a woman. 1988, I was hired to work at Our House of Portland. It was a very wonderful facility, still is. It's, it's still being used for people living with HIV AIDS. Here I am looking oh so 1990s. We threw great parties there, including Halloween was one of the best. One of our residents, it was a 12-bed facility, he was a drag queen, and he was very, very ill at the time that this happened, but he wanted so much to dress up as Dolly, and I watched him do that, holding his IV pole, and I thought, oh my gosh, look at how that costume that means so much to him can bring him to life again. I found myself with tears flowing down my face because I thought, yeah, you know, you know, you're doing it, you're doing it right to the end. 
A lot of the residents there were young gay gentlemen. If they wanted to get dressed up, we would go to the clothes storage areas that they had for people living with HIV and AIDS and get them new clothes as they shrunk. And it was, it was a very important thing, and it gave it people right to the end a sense of dignity and pride and beauty. And that was very significant. I've seen firsthand how clothes can transform and elevate someone. And I think that's really important. And especially when you are considered to be someone that should just go to the sidelines and disappear. And a lot of times that does happen with women <laughs> and people that don't fit the, the norms of fashion. And I used to get that a lot in general over the years. So Kim is a new client of mine. She contacted me and said, you know, time to step it up, feeling a little bit blah. The reason why I'm an activist is basically see something that is not just or right, and then figure out a way to maybe change that, be it a small way or a bigger way. It's sort of this gift they're doing for themselves. And so I feel such a responsibility to do whatever I can with them. Hi, Kim. Hi. <laughs> Come on in. One of the questions I ask is, how would you describe your current fashion style? And she says, tomboy. I give hugs. Is that okay. cool? Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Okay. I volunteered and worked with cats and dogs and horses and rabbits and rats and so I'm always like in jeans and sweatshirts and t-shirts and I just feel like I want to feel good mm -hmm. about how I look. Okay. So check this out. This is your classic 50s, 60s cocktail dress. Especially as we get older, having clothes that have sparkle, having, I, I always say to every woman, you know, that I know, but especially women that are 50 and above, listen, your best friend is a good, bright silver hoop. It brightens your face. I often find myself being critical when I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh, that doesn't, that's not the way things used to be. <laughs> I think that as women get older, because our society is so focused on youth and beauty, your identity, maybe your kids or your job, or, but once you're past those things, you kind of start fading out. It's time to reinvent myself or get more, get excited about myself again. You see older men, and they become this like, you know, hot fox sexy guy with a 27 year old woman on their arm, you know, and that's cool. Women, we are not allowed. We, in many ways, we're viewed as vessels that procreate babies and our moms and then we're done, you know, on every level. We're in a world where patriarchy is the norm. We keep moving towards pushing against it, but you know, but then all of a sudden seeing that really flipping now and realizing, you know, we don't, we don't need to give a flying fuck what anyone says. So this is Hattie's Vintage Clothing, and it's one of the most fun curated vintage stores in Portland. Great. And I love coming here because there's a great variety, and I know that you have a passion like I do around right. clothing of that of different periods, Audrey Hepburn, right. Jackie O. So let's see what we can find here, okay? Looks great. Yeah, no, it is. You know, physically, aging can be a real motherfucker. I mean, it's really hard. You have to keep adapting. It's, it's just tight. It's tight. Yeah. But it's a great color. It, yeah. I mean, I colors. I love the colors. Yeah. But... I'm getting definitely more radical as I get older. And I love it. And what scares me sometimes is, is the fact that that might be cut short before I can do it all. But you know what? As an activist, you have to really come to terms with a lot of what you're doing. You might never see the real results of. You might never see the change, but that's a part of the process. I have a son that at 18, uh, we found out he had terminal cancer. He died at 25. And uh, he taught me the beauty of life. And one of the last things he said to me, not on, you know, the day he died, but around three months before he did, he, he took me by the shoulders and said, listen, mom, this is my cancer, not yours. 
And if you don't live, if you don't live your life, I will be so pissed off, okay? And I knew exactly what he was saying. And it was like, it, it was a vow. I miss him so much. It's really shitty losing a child. That's another reason why when I'm in the world, I really allow myself to live strong. And so have some fun with this. I'm not saying to do this, but I just want to see, you know, and especially that it has a wider flow, a more narrow skirt with it. This is the classy look I was looking for. Yeah, no. The work that I've done and the work that I do now. It's been a successful day. Yeah. <laughs> really just keeps pushing the reality that right until the end, you matter and you can enjoy that process. I don't like to give advice per se, but I really just want to encourage everyone out there to believe that they have the right, intrinsically have the right, to enjoy looking beautiful in their clothes and in their body and to realize that it's radical. It's radical to push against that and it's fun. Oh, I have this coat. Mm -hmm. I would love for you to have it. Thank you I so really, much. I really, really, really would. Oh. It's so fun. It's so <laughs> fun.